And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you a young fellow from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, whom you've heard on many coast-to-coast -coast sports broadcasts. He's been in the business for some 21 years, starting at the age of 17. For the past two years, he has been handling the telecast of the Green Bay Packers. It's my pleasure to introduce for the play-by-play -play in the first period and the starting lineup, Ray Scott. Thank you very much, Bill McCoggan. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are. And welcome, by way of NBC Radio, to this professional world championship game. Let's waste no further time. Let's tell you about the probable starting lineups. When the visiting Cleveland Browns have the ball, Art Hunter of Notre Dame will be the center. At the guard positions will be Jim Ray Smith from Baylor. At the left guard, and at the right guard, we expect to see Herschel Forrester, but they may change around. Herschel from Southern Methodist. At the tackles, the veteran and great Lou Groza. At left tackle, Lou from Ohio State. At right tackle, Mike McCormick from the University of Kansas. At the end position, Pete Brewster, Darrell Pete Brewster of Purdue at left end, Preston Carpenter of Arkansas at right end. In the backfield, Tommy O'Connell, of whom Bill McCaugan has already spoke, will be at quarterback, Tommy from the University of Illinois. At the running back position, the great Jimmy Brown, unanimous rookie of the year this year at fullback. Chet Hanulak at the other running back position from Maryland, and Ray Renfro will be a flanker. Ray, the speedster from North Texas State. When the Detroit Lions have the ball, up front, it'll be at center, Frank Gatsky. At the guards, Hardy Sewell and Stan Campbell. We'll tell you more personal statistics later. At the guard, at the tackles, Lou Kriegmer and Chariani. At the ends, Jim Doran and Steve Junker. Ken Russell may start in place of Chariani at right tackle. In the offensive backfield, Tobin Roth at quarterback. At the running back positions, Gene Gedman and John Henry Johnson. And the flanker, Howard Hopalon Cassidy. There will be others in that offensive cast as well for the Detroit Lions. Defensively, the Browns will use Bill Quinlan and Len Ford at tackles, Bob Gain and Don Colo at the guards. The linebackers will be Vince Costello, Walt Michaels, and Galen Fitz. In the defensive backfield, Warren Law, Kenny Conn, Junior Wren, and Don Paul. Defensively, the Detroit Lions will use up front. At the end positions, Darius McCord and Gene Cronin. At the tackles, Ray Kraus and Gil Maine. The linebackers will be Joe Schmidt and their defensive captain, Bob Long and Roger Zatkoff. In the defensive backfield, we expect to see Carl Karalevitz and Jack Christensen at the corners and playing the deep spots, Yale Larry and Terry Barr. If you follow the Lions and are wondering about Jim David, he has been handicapped by an injury. He may or may not start. That's the way we expect to see these teams line up. So that just about takes care of the probable starting lineup. We'll be set for the kickoff in just a moment. We come back on the air here, direct from Briggs Stadium, with the roar in the background of this crowd of over 56,000 as their hometown heroes announced and described over the public address system a moment ago as the Gas House Gang. This meeting between the Lions and the Browns today for the professional championship holds more than a little drama. The teams have met already once in the regular season. The Detroit Lions won by a score of 20 to 7. Followers of the Lions, of course, will be missing someone by the name of Bobby Lane. The great Bobby Lane suffered a fractured ankle against the Cleveland Browns earlier this season. Tobin Road has carried on nobly since that time. This will be their fourth meeting this year as they played two preseason games and divided honors. The Browns, and it's hard to mention the Browns and speaking of them in a negative sense, but we must report correctly that the Browns have never won at Briggs Stadium. Only a preseason game back in 1950. In championship games between these two teams, in 1952, the Detroit Lions won by a score of 17 to seven over Cleveland. In 1953, in one of the great thrillers of professional championship history, the Lions won it in the last moments by a score of 17 to 16. And then a victory that I am sure Coach Paul Brown of the Browns marks down in his little book as one of the sweetest of his long and colorful coaching career, the 1954 championship game, when the Cleveland Browns won it by a score of 56 to 10. Right now, the referee, Ron Gibbs, and the umpire, Joe Connell, are at the 50-yard line. The co-captains of the two teams are there to shake hands, and the results of the coin toss will be made known in a moment. Kicking off, Jim Martin. The roar of the crowd is now subdued. They're waiting. Jim Martin comes to the ball. His boot is high. Sails deep and far over the end line. It'll be an automatic touchback. 
First down and 10, the Cleveland Browns will put the ball in play from their own 20-yard line, moving left to right here in the first period. And we'll pick up their starters for you just as soon as we can. Starting at quarterback will be Tommy O'Connell. Lou Carpenter will start in place of Chen H Chet Hanulak. Lou from Arkansas, brother of Preston. Jimmy Brown will be at the other running back position, and Ray Renfro will be an inside flanker on the right. The right end is Preston Carpenter, and the left end split is Brewster, and O'Connell fades the pass on the first play. He throws deep and out to the left, and Brewster has it at the sidelines and is doubled out of bounds immediately after a gain of 17 yards to the 37 or possibly 38-yard line of Cleveland. A down-and-out pass centered on the first play finds Tommy O'Connell hitting Pete Brewster. He's run out of bounds by Carl Karolevitz of the Detroit Lions secondary. And so the Browns are one for one in the passing department. First and ten, the ball at the inbounds marker, far side of the field, at their own 37-yard line. O'Connell under center. The snap, pitch going to the left side and swinging in outside of end and doubled out of bounds at the 43-yard line is Jimmy Brown. Carl Karolevitz again in on the defensive play. The gain is beyond the 40 to the 43-yard line. Out of bounds on the far side of the field. It is a gain from the 37 to the 43 of six. Second down, four. Calling the defensive signals for the Detroit Lions is Joe Schmidt. Second down, four, O'Connell under center. The snap, pitch out to the white. Right coming outside is Carpenter. He has held it and spun down at the 44 and a half yard line. Lou Carpenter. Coming up from the secondary is Yale Larry with help from Joe Schmidt, who came over from his middle linebacker position. Paul Brown will be alternating his guards as per usual, sending in instructions prior to every play. The guards alternating are Jim Ray Smith and Fred Robinson. O'Connell pitches to Carpenter. Trying to go outside to the left, he gets up to about the 42-yard line. He'll be very close to a first down. Jimmy Brown. Out to the left side. The ball has not been moved as it is near the out-of-bounds on the far side of the field because it is that close to a first down. No indication is yet from the officials that they'll have a measurement. The ball is now brought in to the inbounds marker. It is fourth down at about a half yard short of a first down. And the Browns send in their punting formation. Now the Browns will line up first as if they're in a tee and then immediately go back to a punt formation. It'll find Kenny Kahn punting from the Cleveland 31. The pass from center is true. The kick is a wobbly one off to the right. Barr watches it land at the 25, rolls back to the 20. He picks it up and is downed immediately at the 10-yard line. He was driven back from the 11, is where the ball will be placed, as Terry Barr elected to handle that punt with three Browns standing by, led by Paul Wigan, their defensive left end. A 41-yard punt. First and 10, Detroit has the ball for the first time in this game from their own 11-yard line. We're early in the first period. There is no score. The championship of professional football at stake at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. The snap to Rote over left tackle, swinging now wide to the left and being caught for a loss of one is Gene Gedman. Walt Michaels is the first man of Cleveland to hit him. It is a loss of a half yard back, let's call it the 10 yard line, a loss of one second down 11. Calling the defensive signals is Walt Michaels for Cleveland. The Lions have the ball coming up now, their second play from scrimmage from their own 10 yard line. Split out to the left is Jim Dorn. Again, it is Gedman off left tackle. He finds a big hole, comes to the 15, through the 20, and spins to the 20 and a half. Don Paul in on the defensive play for Cleveland. Gene Gedman from the University of Indiana makes his home now in Detroit, Michigan, native of Duquesne, Pennsylvania. Shy of a first down by a half yard. The ball is placed right on the 20 yard line. Inbounds marker near side of the field. It is third down and less than a yard for Detroit. Gedman over left guard spins away from one tackler. He may or may not have the first down. It's that close. Walt Michaels came booming in there to bring him down. And so players now along with officials surround the ball. First down by inches. The snap. John Henry Johnson over right guard to the 25 to the 30, swings to the left, 35, 40-yard line. John Henry Johnson broke over a big hole on the right side of the Browns line, swung out to the left. He's finally brought down by Don Paul of the secondary and Galen Fitz, the linebacker. John Henry Johnson carries for a Cleveland first down, just shy of the line, 40 by a half yard. And again, it's Walt Michaels setting up the defense for Cleveland. <laughs> A 19-yard run for John Henry Johnson. Again, Cassidy will be a flanker to the right. Junker and Doran are split at ends a couple of yards. 
the snap, and Rote fades the pass. He looks, he throws over the middle, and it is complete at the Brown 40-yard line to right end Steve Junker, who cut across the middle and made a tremendous catch right in front of Kenny Kahn, who made the tackle. So Rote is one for one in the passing department, and the Lions are in Cleveland Brown territory at the 40-yard line. First down and 10, Detroit. There is no score. After five minutes of play in the first period, this is the first time that either team has been able to penetrate beyond the 50. The Lions, first down and 10 at Cleveland's 40-yard line. Jim Dorn splits to the right. Cassidy will flank outside Steve Junker now, who is lined up at left end. The ends have switched. Tobin Road under center. A four-man Cleveland line, three linebackers tight, and coming to the outside is Gedman. He gets away from one man, but he's caught after a short gain of one. Swinging outside his own left tackle, running laterally. He's pinned down by Don Paul, who plays the right corner, along with Vince Costello and Junior Wren. A gain just across the 40 to the 39-yard line. A gain of one. Second down, nine. Cassidy flanks outside the right end, Steve Junker. Jim Doran is split left. Rote fades the pass on second down, nine. He hits his man at the 26-yard line, Doran. He falls forward to the 25 as he's tackled. Don Paul makes the tackle. As the left end, Jim Doran made a move as if to go deep, but he stopped, button hooked, took the strike, and it's a first down for Detroit at the 26-yard line as the ball is placed down at the inbounds marker. The defender that time slipped as he came to make the defensive play. The field is in, as we told you prior to the start of the game, excellent condition considering the weather, but it has its slippery spot. A fake to Johnson and Getman on a trap play over the right side. Comes up to the 22-yard line, and there he's thrown back very hard by four Cleveland Brown players led by Vince Costello and Galen Fitz, two of the linebackers. The fake that time went to the first man through, John Henry Johnson. The handoff went actually to Gene Getman. The forward progress is marked the 23-yard line, so it is a gain of three. Second down, seven. Detroit in possession at the Cleveland Brown 23-yard line. Tobin Rote has his right end tight, and Jim Doran split left about eight yards, and Rote fades the pass on second down, seven. He throws deep for Cassidy. He's in the end zone. It is incomplete. Warren Lahr went down with Cassidy, who, as he crossed the goal line, had about two steps on Lahr. But the ball thrown high as Cassidy was in the deep right corner of the end zone enabled Lahr to get down and break it up as both he and Cassidy went up for it. The pass is incomplete. It is now third down and seven. Getman leaves the game. He is replaced by Dave Middleton. The right end junker is tight. Doran is split left. And Rote fades the pass on third down. He looks. He throws. It is incomplete for the flair man. Out to the right side, covered by Lahr, John Henry Johnson. Middleton went fairly deep and was covered beautifully. The swing pass was thrown to the fullback, John Henry Johnson. It was incomplete. And so now with fourth down at about seven, into the game comes Jim Martin. He will apparently attempt a field goal. The attempt with Tobin Rote holding will come from the Cleveland 31-yard line. Midway in the first quarter, there is no score. The Lions right now are going to try and score. The snap, the kick. It is good. The score, the Detroit Lions three, the Cleveland Browns nothing. What's new in automobiles? Jim Martin preparing to kick off for Detroit as the Lions score first and lead three to nothing at the midway point of the first period. The whistle with Campbell and Brown deep to receive. Jimmy Brown in the end zone, takes it five yards deep and decides to run it out. He comes up the left side to the five, to the ten, and he's spun under at the 17. Making the tackle, along with Jim Martin, who kicked off, Gary Lowe, who is in there on the kickoff team for Detroit. He is a defensive back. So the Browns have the ball, first down and ten at their own 17-yard line. The white-clad Cleveland Browns moving left to right here in this first period, trailing by a score of three to nothing. The ball at the inbounds marker, far side of the field. Again under center, it'll be Tommy O'Connell. Ray Renfro will flank to the right. The ends are in tight. In the running back spots are Carpenter, Luke Carpenter, and Jimmy Brown. O'Connell fades the pass. Excellent protection. Goes out to the left side. Renfro has it at the 27-yard line. He's brought down immediately. Making the tackle, Yale Larry. Whistle on the field. We're going to have an official timeout. It is not a team timeout. That play started at the 17, and it's very close to a first down. O'Connell under center. Five-man Detroit Lions. The snap. Straight ahead goes Jimmy Brown. Across the 30, he has the first down with a couple of yards to spare. 
The Detroit Lions, in chalking up their field goal, making the march deep into Cleveland territory, chalked up four first downs as that drive started from the 10. Joe Schmidt and Gil Maines in on the stop for Detroit on this last play as Jimmy Brown picks up the first down at the Cleveland Brown 30-yard line. And the running backs are wide apart as O'Connell fades the pass. He looks once, he throws, it is intercepted by Bob Long. He's at the 30, the Brown 25. He's at the 20-yard line. The roar tells you how this highly partisan Detroit Lion crowd felt about that interception by left linebacker Bob Long from UCLA. And the ball is spotted at the 19-yard line of Cleveland. Inbounds marker near side of the field, and the Lions, moving right to left, have a tremendous break. Dave Middleton is a flanker to the right. Steve Junker, the right end, is split a couple of yards. To the left is Jim Doran. The snap. Off to the right side is Cassidy to the 18. Roach faded as if to pass. His running back on the left side, Howard Hopalong Cassidy. Delayed just a count or two and then slammed off the right side and picked up a yard where Bill Quinlan, the defensive left end of Cleveland, made the stop. A gain of one, second down, nine. Both ends split this time and Middleton flanks outside to the left. Rote fades the pass. Now he runs up the middle. He's at the 15. He's at the 10. The 5, the 3, the 1-yard line. He's right down with it, a foot or so of that goal line. Hogan Roach went busting up that middle. Tobin Roach has been, throughout his great career in the National Football League, with the Packers, and this year with the Detroit Lions, one of the great running quarterbacks. He's averaged five yards a carry. He brings his team to first down and goal to goal on the one. Dave Middleton is the flanker to the right. The rest of the line is tight, and Roach sneaks into the end zone for the touchdown. Martin comes into the game. He will attempt the extra point as the Lions now lead with four minutes of play unofficially remaining in the first period, nine to nothing. Grote will hold. The snap, the ball is down. The kick is in the air. It is good. The point is good and the score now. The Detroit Lions, 10. The Cleveland Browns, nothing. Jim Martin preparing to come up to the ball with again Jimmy Brown and Bill Campbell back to receive at the goal line. Martin comes to the ball. His kick is high and swings off to the right. Campbell comes up to it at the three-yard line to the 10, to the left, 15, to the 20. To the 23 yard and a fumble the ball is loose it is rolling back toward the goal line it is recovered at the 15 yard line by detroit we will credit terry barr of the defensive secondary in on the kickoff team of Detroit for recovering that fumble at the Cleveland Browns 15 yard line as Milt Campbell fumbled. And Detroit has their second break in just a couple of moments. Tobin Road under center, Middleton flanking to the left and Rope fades the pass. He looks, he throws, incomplete at the one. As Middleton took a step as if to go inside and the pass was thrown as if he intended to head to the sideline. It is incomplete, second down 10. Unofficially, three and a half minutes remaining first quarter. The Lions are leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Jim Doran splits to the left this time, and Middleton is outside the right end as a flanker. The snap. Short gain over left guard by Hopalong Cassidy. Walt Michaels made the stop. A change coming in now for the Detroit Lions. Gene Gedman is coming in. Cassidy started this game in the offensive unit for Detroit as the flanker back. Third down, nine yards to go. The ball at the 14-yard line. Roach fades the pass. Looks right, looks left. Over the middle, it is complete to the five, the junker, to the two, to the one. And he's swarmed under it about the two-yard line. Right over the middle, Steve Junker got loose. It is a first down and goal to go at the one-and-a-half-yard line of Cleveland. As Roach, at the last instant, as he was about to be hit, spotted Junker over the middle loose. He hit him with a beauty. 
First down and goal to go. Detroit at the one and a half yard line. Late first quarter, a little better than two minutes remaining. The official time in the National Football League is kept by the umpire. The clock that we refer to is unofficial. Middleton flanks way out to the right and both ends are tight for Detroit. Straight ahead goes Gedman. Close to the goal line. The headlinesman will mark his forward progress very closely. The headlinesman immediately puts his hand on his head to indicate there's an official time. Dan Tehan, the headlinesman of today's game, it's close. Goal to go. Middleton flanks to the right. Roach sneaks over guard. Is he in there? No signal from the officials. He evidently has not made it. Oven Roach trying to sneak over left guard. It is now just inches short as the players unpile and the ball is spotted. Road under center again, a mass defensive line. Straight ahead goes Getman. He is in there. Gene Getman scores the second touchdown of the game for the Detroit Lions. And this team that has been a second-half team and unable to score in the last few games at least very often in the first half is suddenly on top of a 16 to nothing lead. Road holding, Martin tempting the conversion. The snap, the ball is down, the kick is in the air. It is good. And so now the Detroit Lions lead the Cleveland Browns by a score of 17 to nothing. And the Lions leading by a score of 17 to nothing. Martin comes to the ball. His boot is down the middle, and Reynolds at the four. Slips to one knee, gets up. Comes to the 10, 15, 20, 22. And there he's hit by a very hard tackle by John Gordy, rookie guard from Tennessee, in on the kickoff unit for Detroit. First down and 10 to Cleveland at their own 22-yard line, between the 21 and 22. Tommy O'Connell will be the Cleveland Brown quarterback. Tommy from the University of Illinois has had a tremendous year for Cleveland. He has an inside flanker on the right, Ray Renfro. The ends are split. Brown and Carpenter at the running back positions and fading the pass is O'Connell. He looks to the left and he throws deep, intended for Brewster. It is complete and going out of bounds at the 42-yard line as wrestling him out is Carl Karalevitz of the Detroit secondary. Pete Brewster takes the down and out pass from Tommy O'Connell. Seconds remaining in the first period. First down for Cleveland at their own 41 and a half yard line. The guards exchanging for Cleveland today with instructions from Paul Brown are Jim Ray Smith and Fred Robinson. Fred from the University of Washington. Jim Ray Smith from Baylor. As O'Connell gives to Carpenter. Takes to Carpenter and off to the left side goes Renfro with blockers in front of him to the 50, 45, 40 into Detroit territory at the 37 yard line. A beautiful fake that time. It looked as if Lou Carpenter was swinging out to the right. But Ray Renfro, from his flanking position on the right, circled wide to the left and crossed into Detroit territory and is finally brought down at the 38-yard line by Yale Larry. First down and 10 Cleveland now at the 38-yard line of Detroit. Ray Renfro breaks out of the huddle and flanks to the right side. Pete Brewster is split left. The right end, Preston Carpenter, is in tight. O'Connell the snap. Swinging out to the left this time is Carpenter. He cuts back sharply, brought down from behind at the 35-yard line by Bob Long, who circled the play, Terry Barr, who came up from the secondary, along with Gil Maines, the defensive right end. Preston Carpenter is the right end of the Cleveland Browns in their offensive unit, and in a running back position, Lou Carpenter. They are brothers, both from the University of Arkansas. Again on the play to the 34-yard line of four, and it's second down six for Cleveland. There is the gun. That's the end of the first quarter and the score. The Detroit Lions 17, the Cleveland Browns nothing. The referee, Ron Gibbs, signals that time is back in. Browns breaking out of the huddle. Second down, seven yards to go. The Cleveland backfield, O'Connell at quarter. Renfro the flanking back. Lou Carpenter the running half. The fullback is Jimmy Brown. A long count. There's a flag. Big number uh, 70, Ray Krause, came around and belted Tommy O'Connell from behind. There's going to be a five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty against the Detroit Lions for offside. It was Ray Krause, and O'Connell has a word with the referee, Ron Gibbs. The Browns up to the line of scrimmage. Pete Bruce to the left end is split. The flanker 
Ray Renfro is out to the right. The handoff goes to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He's at the 30, down to the 25. He's to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in for touchdown. Jimmy Brown leaves Detroit Packers scattered all over the field. Carl Karalevich had a shot at it at the 15. Also, number 24, Jack Christensen. But Brown, the former All-American from Syracuse University who led the National Football League in ground gaining this year, just ran over them, and the Browns now have their first touchdown. Jimmy Brown going 30 yards for a touchdown, and the score is now 17 to 6. And of course, it'll be Lou the Togrosa who will try to pick up the extra point. Tommy O'Connell holding. There's the snapback from center. It's spotted, it's booted, it's good. And it's now a 17 to 7 football game. Groza gets the whistle, moves up on the football. It's a low kick going down to about the four-yard line. It's taken by Larry's to the 10, the 15, to the 20, moves to his left at the 25, and goes down as he gets to about the 29 or the 30. Yale Larry, the former Texas A&M star from Fort Worth, Texas, took the kick on the Lion four-yard line, and he returned it all the way to the 30 before he was tackled by Bobby Freeman, number 18. So the Lions now have a first and 10 on their own 30-yard line. Line backfield, Tobin Rudd at quarterback. Howard Cassidy, John Henry Johnson in there, Middleton also in there. Cassidy is the running back, Middleton is the flanker. Middleton is out to the right, the left hand, Jim Doran splits way out. Tobin Rudd looks over that way. Rudd calls the signals, fakes, now he hands off to Henry Johnson and he gets to just about the line of scrimmage. Tobin Rudd, the quarterback, first fake the flip to Howard Hopalong Cassidy, then hand it to his fullback, John Henry Johnson. Johnson piled up as he got to just about the line of scrimmage. Galen Fitz and Vince Costello teaming up on the play for the Browns. Vince Costello, their middle linebacker. Galen Fitz, the linebacker on the left side. The left end this time is Junker. Tobin Road calls. This time again he fakes the flip and hands off to John Henry Johnson, and Johnson gets just about a yard. He was hit by Waller Michaels, number 34. Again, the fake flip to Cassidy as Cassidy moved out to the left. And then the handoff to Johnson, sending him right into the middle of the line. But there he was met by the Browns veteran linebacker, Waller Michaels, who played his collegiate football at Washington and Lee. This time it's Middleton moving out to the left. The right end, Jim Doran, split by about 10 yards. Galen Fiss over there to cover him. Tobin Roth calls the signals, looks for a receiver. He throws. It is no good. Over the head of the intended receiver, Dave Middleton, upfield, almost at the 50-yard line, covered by Don Paul on the play. Tobin Road has attempted seven passes this afternoon. He has completed three of them for 44 yards. Very few of Larry's punts have been returned this year. He kicks them high and he kicks them far. He was rushed. The kick goes to Billy Reynolds at the 34. He's to the 35, but he is down at back at the 34. Darn Dibble was downfield. Darn Dibble made the tackle. The rush was put on uh, Yale Larry by Jim Ray Smith. The kick went to about the 34, and that's exactly where Reynolds ended up, a 46-yard punt. And the Browns have it, first and 10 on their own 34-yard line. The Lions 17, the Browns 7 in the second period. Renfro, the inside flanker of the left. Brewster, the left end, is split out by about 15 yards. The handoff goes to the fullback, Jimmy Brown, going straight ahead. He gets just a couple of yards, moving across the 35-yard line. Hit by Ray Krause and Joe Schmidt. Krause. 275 pounds, Joe Schmidt, 222 pounds, the Lions' great linebacker. Justin Carpenter, the right end, splits out. Brewster does the same on the left side, and Renfro is the inside flanker to the right. O'Connell at quarterback calls the signals. The Lions up there in a five-man line. The blitz is on. O'Connell back to pass. He throws. It is no good. Well, they had the rush on him that time. It was intended for Pete Brewster at about the 45-yard line in Detroit territory, but it was far short. Blitzing was Bob Long, the left linebacker, and also Joe Schmidt, the middle linebacker. So on the incompleted forward pass, it is now third down coming up and nine yards to go. Renfro is the inside flanker to the left. O'Connell calls the signals. He takes. On the handoff, it goes to Jimmy Brown, the fullback. He comes forward to the 40-yard line, but of course it's going to be far short of the first down. Jimmy Brown, the fullback, taking the handoff from Tommy O'Connell. Going straight ahead, he got to the 40-yard line before he was hit by Joe Schmidt and Darius McCord. McCord, the defensive left end for the Detroit Lions, and Schmidt, as we have mentioned several times, the middle linebacker. So now it's Yale Larry and Terry Barr going back into the double safety. Kenny Collins, the former Louisiana State star, will do the kicking for the Browns. There's the kick. It's a good high kick going inside the 20-yard line. It's taken down there by Yale Larry. 
He runs to his right. He gets away from one man. He gets away from another. Cuts back in and has dropped at the 50-yard line. He was slowed down by Preston Carpenter and then tackled by Vince Costello. There's a marker on the play at the 30-yard line. So let's, let's see what it's going to be. 42-yard punt for Kenny Combs. Vince Costello made the tackle. The kick went to about the 19-yard line, and Larry brought it back from there to the 25. But let's see now what the call is going to be. It's a holding penalty. And it's going to be against the Detroit Lions. So the Browns get a break. Penalty a half the distance to the goal line penalty. Jim Doran splits way out to the right. Middleton is out to the left. Tobin Rote calls the signals. He takes. He gives to Cassidy. Cassidy comes forward to about the 15-yard line. Warren Law, Galen Fisk in there to hit him along with Bob Gain. Bob Gain leading the charge. Law and Fisk then coming up to help out. So Cassidy gets from the 13 to the 16-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be third down, or second down, I should say, in about seven. All resting just over the 15-yard line at the 16. Doran is out to the right. Middleton out to the left. The left-hand junker slipped by about five yards. Road is going back to pass. He throws. It's good to Doran at the 25-yard line. Wrestled out of bounds by Kenny Conn, but it's going to be enough for the first down. Tobin Road, the Lions' fine quarterback, connecting with Jim Doran, the veteran end, moving from the 16-yard line across the 25. We'll call it the 26-yard line, and it's the Lions' first down and 10 yards to go. The Lion backfield has Tobin Rowe throwing them. Middleton, the flanking halfback. Howard Cassidy, the running half, and John Henry Johnson as the fullback. During the right end again is split. Rope this time to John Henry Johnson on the draw, and he comes forward to about the 28-yard line, getting a couple of yards on the play. It looked for a moment as though the Browns' defense had fallen for it, and the Johnson might go for distance. He does get to the 28-yard line. Bob Gain and Bill Quinlan combining for the Browns to make the tackle. Middleton is out to the right this time. The right end junker is split, and Doran is the left end. Here it goes to Johnson. He's at the 30, the 35. He's at the 40. Cuts to his left. He's at the 45-yard line. Is hit and still on his feet, and now is dropped at the 47. Don Colo upfield. Vince Costello also upfield to make the tackle. Another fine run by John Henry Johnson with Waller Michaels, who finally grabbed him. He was hit a couple of times, but still kept going. And the Lions have another first down at their own 47-yard line. The Detroit Lions leading by a score of 17 to 7 in the second period, with a little better than nine minutes remaining to be played. Junker, the right end, is split by just two or three yards. The handoff goes to Cassidy. He's wide to his left. He's out of the Browns 45, inside the 45 to about the 42. Tobin Rowe taking to the fullback, Tracy, and giving to Howard Hopalong Cassidy, the former Ohio State All-American. Cassidy swinging wide to the left, bounced out of bounds by Junior Wren and Don Paul, but not until he had reached the Browns' 41-yard line. The left end door in a split. Rote goes back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It is no good. Almost intercepted by Galen Fisk. Down at the 31-yard line, the intended receiver was Hopalong Cassidy, Bill Quinlan, the defensive left end finally broke through the Lion protection and did get a shot at Rowe just as he was throwing the ball. Dave Middleton takes the flanking spot to the right. Jim Doran is the left end, and he split way out. Junker split by about five. Rowe throws the quick one. Tracy has it at the 30. He's out of the 25. Tackled by Waller Michaels. That time, Tobin Rowe sent about four receivers downfield. Tracy has been injured on the play. He was hit hard by Waller Michaels, a 16-yard pass play from Tobin Roth to Tom Tracy, who hails from nearby Pontiac, Michigan. Tracy played his college football at Tennessee. He now leaves the football game, shaken up on the play, and it's first and 10 for the Detroit Lions on the 25-yard line. Middleton out to the right. Both ends are split. Road calls the signals. Again, he goes back to throw, and again, he gets protection. He throws a long one, and it is just broken up. Intended for Jim Doran down in the end zone, and Junior Wren just did get his fingertips on it as Doran was waiting with outstretched arms. Tobin Road on first and ten, going for the long one. As he tried to find Doran open in the end zone, Doran was almost open. Middleton comes out to the right. Doran flanks from his left end position. Road going back on the draw. He gets to John Henry Johnson. He gets to just about the line of scrimmage. Don Colo and Bob Gain there to grab him, and now the tempers flared just a bit. 
Also in on the play was Big Lenny Ford. The Lions to the line of scrimmage. Doran out to the right. Middle in the inside flank of the right. Rote back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It is no good. Middleton, the intended receiver, was being covered by Kenny Collins with linebacker Galen Fist also trending him downfield. Middleton made a diving try for it inside the 15-yard line, but it was incomplete. And it's now fourth down coming up and 11 yards to go. And we may have Jim Martin trying another field goal. He booted one early in the first period to give the Lions a 3-0 lead at the time. A field goal try. Tobin Rote will hold, and Jim Martin will try. If it's good, it'll be from the 33-yard line. It's a fake. Rode is running with the ball. He throws the pass, and it's going to be the touchdown. Beautifully executed, a fake field goal. Tillman Rope was holding. Instead, he picked it up, rolled to his right, saw Junker down there all alone, and it went for the touchdown. Jim Martin not trying for the extra point. The ball is spotted. It's booted. It's good. And the Detroit Lions now lead by a score of 24 to 7. Billy Reynolds and Jimmy Brown, the deep men for Cleveland. Reynolds on the far side, Brown on the near side. That was a 26-yard scoring pass. Rote to Junker. There's the kick. It's a good high one. Reynolds goes way back and goes out of the end zone, so it'll be a touchback, and the Browns will take over first and ten on their own 20-yard line. Jim Martin really booting them today. That's the second one that has carried all the way out of the end zone, and several others have gone down to the end zone. Well, the crowd of more than 56,000 here at Briggs Stadium still talking about that fake field goal and the touchdown pass from Tobin Roach to the rookie end, Steve Junker. The Browns move out of the huddle. Renfro is the flanker out to the left. Tommy O'Connell at quarterback, calling the signals. He takes. He's going back to pass. He throws. It's good to Brewster at the 35-yard line. Tackled immediately and pushed out of bounds. Tommy O'Connell finding the lanky left end. Pete Brewster in the open at the 35. Bounced out of bounds immediately by Jack Christensen. But it goes as a first down for the Browns, moving the ball from the 20 to the 35-yard line. First and 10 as the Browns move to the line of scrimmage. Renfro out to the right. Brewster, the left end, is split. The Lions in the five-man line. The handoff goes to Lou Carpenter. He gets the block from Robinson, but he is nailed and back to the line of scrimmage. It was Joe Schmidt, the Lions' defensive captain and their fine linebacker, along with Yale Larry. Actually, it was Schmidt who made the tackle, and Larry then came up to make sure that Carpenter wasn't going to go anywhere. So Lou Carpenter, the former Detroit Lion, playing in his first year with Cleveland, Loses a couple of yards from the 35 to the 33, and it'll be second down and 12 yards to go. Cleveland coming out of the huddle. Jim David in the defensive backfield for Detroit now. The Lions up there in a six-man line. Joe Schmidt, the middle guard, just about another yard and back. O'Connell back to pass. He throws. Almost intercepted by Bob Long, intended for Preston Carpenter at the 45-yard line. O'Connell's forward pass, almost picked off by Bob Long, the linebacker from UCLA. It'll be third down now, 12 yards to go. Long was the boy who intercepted the O'Connell pass in the first period to set up the Lions' first touchdown. Four to seven in the first half of play with about six minutes remaining in this half. O'Connell calls the signals. The ends are split. The inside flanker is to the right. O'Connell going back to pass. There are flags thrown. It's the screen pass to Jimmy Brown. He gets away from Roger Zatkoff. He's at the 30. He's at the 35. And down he goes at the 36-yard line. The Lions were offside on the play. Tommy O'Connell on the screen pass to Jimmy Brown. The tackle made by Terry Barr. Actually, there was a gain of just a couple of yards on the play. As the uh, line of scrimmage prior to the play was the 33. Brown got to the 35. They are now talking, the officials are talking, where the Browns captain, Mike McCormick, number 74, a five-yard penalty being paced off. Renfro is the flanker. He's way out to the right. O'Connell calls the signals. Again, the Lions in their five-man line. The flip goes to Hanulak. He's going to throw the football. He throws. It is intercepted. Ted Hanulak trying to pass to Ray Renfro, but it was intercepted by Jim David, and the Lions have the ball. Tommy O'Connell gave to Chad Hanulak. 
He started to run out to his right as if it were a running play. Then he threw the pass, intercepted by Jim David at the Brown 46-yard line. And so the Lions again have the ball in Cleveland territory at the Brown 46. Detroit out of the huddle. Doran split way out of the right. There's a fumble. Tobin Rode in getting the snap back. Did not get it from Frank Gunner Gapsky. There's a pile up there. It looks like it was either Rode or Stan Campbell who fell on the ball. Tobin Rode recovered. The Blue Jersey Lions out of the huddle. Dave Middleton moving out to the left. The right end Jim Doran is split out. There's the snap back to Rode. He's back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It's good to, to Junker. He has it at the 40. He's at the 35. Down to the 30. He fumbles. The ball is in the playing field. It is picked up by Don Paul down inside the 10 in Cleveland territory. And down he goes at the six-yard line. Papalong Cassidy, I believe, who, who made the tackle on the play. It was Waller Michaels who hit Steve Junker, who caught the ball originally. Wrote to Junker. Junker had moved out to about the Browns' 20-yard line. He was hit hard by Michaels. George fell loose from the ball, and the ball went to the six-yard line, where Don Paul picked it up, started to run with it, but was dropped by Hopalong Cassidy. So the Browns have it first and ten on their own six-yard line. About five minutes left to play in the first half. The Browns out of the huddle. Tommy O'Connell calling the signals. The right end, Preston Carpenter, split way out. The flanker rent throws to the left. The flip goes to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He comes forward over the five to about the eight-yard line, and there's a fumble. He was hit hard by Darius McCord, the left end of the Detroit Lions. So let's see now who has the pigskin on this one. Fred Robinson racing in from the Browns bench. They're still digging for that football down there inside the 10. Mike McCormick was the boy who came up with it at the eight-yard line. So the Browns gained two yards on the fumble, and the ball is on the eight. It is second down and eight yards to go at that spot. Hanulak is the running halfback, and Jimmy Brown is the fullback. Preston Cup in the right end split way out. O'Connell gives this time to Jimmy Brown on the draw, and he goes nowhere. He is dropped at the six-yard line by Roger Zatkoff and Gene Cronin. Roger Zatkoff, the linebacker who was with the Browns during the preseason training period. He's from the University of Michigan, makes his home here in Detroit. Gene Cronin played his college football at College of Pacific. His home is in Sacramento, California. Third down and ten. Brewster, the left end, split way out. Zatkoff over there to cover him. O'Connell throwing over this way. It is intercepted by Terry Byrne. It's going to be a touchdown. O'Connell throwing from his end zone intended for Pete Brewster at about the 18-yard line in Cleveland Territory picked off by the speedy Terry Barr the former Michigan star who raced down the near sideline no one had a chance now Tobin Road holding at the 10-yard line Jim Martin boots and it's good the point is good the score is the Detroit Lions 31 30 rather and the Cleveland Browns 7 the Chieftains more powerful they all fall far short of Pontiac's jeweled action Tempest 395 performance. The Chieftain's more advanced in design, with aero frame stability, quadrupoise rotability, and circles of steel safety. And the Pontiac Chieftain gives you dozens of extras at no extra cost. For example, twice as many color choices, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting standard on even the lowest price models, oversized tires, safety flat glass all around, crank-operated many panes, and many others. Believe me, any way you compare it, the Pontiac Chieftain beats the best. Martin kicking off. Jimmy Brown takes it in the end zone. He's to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35. Cuts to his left. He's at the 45-yard line to the 46, and there he's tackled. Up along Cassidy making the tackle for the Detroit Lions. The kick went all the way into the Browns' end zone. It was high. The Lions were downfield quickly, but Jimmy Brown broke away from a couple of them and returned upfield to the 46-yard line in Cleveland territory, where it'll be first down for Cleveland, 10 yards to go. Chet Hanulak to the left in the double wing this time. Both ends split by about four yards. Mel Plum and the quarterback draws at the 50, the 45. He cuts to his right and gets to the 40, the 36-yard line where he is tackled by Terry Barr. 
on the quarterback draw. Milt Plum, the Browns' fine rookie quarterback from Penn State, set up as if to pass and then took off up the middle and got to the Lions' 36-yard line before Terry Barr made the tackle for the Detroit team. So it's first and ten for the Browns on the Detroit 36, and the Browns have their work cut out for them if they hope to get back in this football game. They trail by a score of 31-7 to with just a couple of minutes remaining in the first half. He goes back to pass. He throws. It is no good. Almost intercepted by Jim David down at the 20-yard line. Preston Carpenter, the intended receiver at the 20, almost intercepted by Jim David on the Detroit 36-yard line. The Cleveland backfield has Mill Plum at quarterback, Ray Renfro the flanking back, Chet Hanulak the running halfback, and Jimmy Brown is the fullback. Renfro goes out to the right, Hanulak to the left, as again we have the double wing. The Lions up there in a six-man line. The rush will be on this time. Plum back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It is intercepted. Joe Schmidt, the Lion captain, has it down at the 19-yard line. He was tackled immediately by Preston Carpenter. It was intended for Carpenter. And it was Carpenter who made the tackle. So the Lions take over on the interception by their captain, Joe Schmidt, at the Detroit 19-yard line. Football team as the Lions break out of the huddle. Door in the right end, split by about 15. Middleton is the flanking back out to the left. Root calls the signal. He takes. Hands off to Cassidy. Cassidy going to his left, gets to the 21-yard line, and there he's hit. Howard Cassidy, tackled by Waller Michaels, who dove in at around his ankles to make the stop. Cassidy, 5'9", 180 pounds. Heisman Trophy winner, of course, for the Lions' number one draft choice a couple of years ago. The ball on the 21-yard line in Detroit territory. A minute and a half left to play in the first half of this championship game. Doran this time is out to the right, Middleton to the left, Junker, the left end split by just a couple of yards, the handoff goes to Cassidy, he's up over the 25 to the 26-yard gain. A gain of uh, five yards on the play from the 21 to the 26, Don Colo, the Browns defensive captain, and their big right tackle making the tackle on that play. Colo, 6'3", 251 pounds from Brown University. Doran is out to the right, Middleton to the left this time. Gatsky over the ball at center. Tobin Road calls the signals. There's a marker down there. And now Tobin Road is being hit by Costello, Don Colo, Galen Fitz. There'll be a penalty on the play. Let's wait now to get the official call from the referee. Offside signal against the Detroit Lions. Detroit, offside, it'll move the ball. Back to the 21 if the Browns elect to accept it. Offside, the penalty declined. Just 30 seconds left to play in the first half. Gatsky over the ball at center. He snaps his head up twice. There's the long snap back from center. Larry gets the kick away. Billy or Chen Hanulak signals for a fair catch and takes it at the 44-yard line in Cleveland territory. Larry. Kicks to the Cleveland Browns, 44, a fair catch signal for by Chet the Jet Hanulak, a 33-yard punt for Yale Larry. And the official, the referee, Ron Gibbs, signals the time is back in now, but I believe the Browns are now going to call for timeout. First and 10 on the round, 44. Plum is at quarterback. The Lions have their three-man line up there. Plum fakes to Hanulak, fakes to Renfro. He goes back to pass. He throws. Renfro was the intended receiver, I believe. Jimmy Brown jumped up there and had his fingers on it at the 43-yard line in Detroit territory. But it's incomplete. It bounced off the fingertips of Jimmy Brown. Renfro also out in that same general area. Plum that time first faking the end around, or faking to Hanulak, then faking to the flanking back Renfro, who was out on the right side. It's incomplete, second and 10, with just about uh, nine or 10 seconds left to play in the first half. Plum barks the signals. This time he fakes to Hanulak, he fumbles, and it is recovered by Gil Maines of the Detroit Lions. With just about four or five seconds left to play, the Lions again get a break as Gil Maines recovers the fumble, Bill Plum, in trying to hand off to Hanulak. Hanulak did not get it, and we may have a field goal try. The Lions are seeking revenge for a 56 to 10 humiliation they suffered at Cleveland in 1954. Roth is set to hold the ball at the 44-yard line. 
It spotted. It booted. It is no good. It's off to the left. The 44-yard field goal try is no good, and the score remains 31 to 7. That's the end of the first half. The score, the Detroit Lions 31, the Cleveland Browns 7. At Briggs Stadium in Detroit, Michigan, Ray Scott, along with Bill McCorgan, at halftime of the championship game of the National Football League between the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns. I hope you've been with us since the start of this game this afternoon because it has been tremendous. And despite the fact that the Detroit Lions lead here at halftime by a score of 31 to 7, if you will forgive that old sports broadcaster's cliche of don't go away, don't give up if you are a Cleveland Brown fan, the pattern of games in this National Football League this year would certainly, I believe, bear me out for reminding you not to go away. We need only, in fact, go back to a week ago today when these same Detroit Lions on top today by 31 to 7, trailed at halftime 24 to 7, yet came on to win. It could well be we'll have that sort of a game here today in Detroit. Statistics sometimes are very dry, but I do believe that we have some statistics here that are very important as far as telling the story of what has transpired in the first half. The alertness, certainly, of the Detroit Lions defense has been tremendous. They have come up in the way of pass interceptions with four. They have come up with key recoveries of Cleveland Brown fumbles. The whistle, he comes up to the ball. His boot is high, fairly deep. Larry at the goal line, to the five up the middle, 10, 15, swings to the right, 20, 25 yard line, he snowed under. Yale Larry, Jim Ray Smith was the first Cleveland Brown to make contact. And so the Lions have the ball, first down and 10, their own 25-yard line, moving left to right here in the third period on the long end of a 31-7 lead, fashioned not only by their offensive unit, but by tremendous play by their defensive unit. Four pass interceptions being very key ones, and two recoveries of Cleveland Brown fumbles. First and 10, Detroit at their own 25-yard line, and the lights have been turned on here at Briggs Stadium. Tobin Road is under center. John Henry Johnson and Gedman at the running back positions. Cassidy is an outside flanker to the left. The snap, it is up the middle. Gedman gets just a couple before he's met by linebacker Galen Fitz from Kansas University. Up front, it is Frank Gatsky at center. The guards are Harley Sewell and Stan Campbell. The tackles are Lou Creekmer and Ken Russell. The ends are Steve Junker and Jim Doran. The flanker, Howard Hopalong Cassidy. Cassidy flanks left, Jim Doran split right. A pitch out that goes wild. It is recovered by Cleveland at the line of scrimmage. Tobin Roach trying to pitch out to the left. Lou Creekmer recovered that fumble. A pickup perhaps of a half yard as the ball rolled forward that much from the line of scrimmage. Tobin Roach under center. The snap. Looks, throws. Cassidy has it at the 34, rolls forward to the 35. Fumble. Cleveland is on the ball. The question now is whether the fumble occurred before or after the whistle. It was after the whistle, so ruled by the officials. Warren Lahr made the tackle on Cassidy. It is short of a first down by a half yard. Fourth down coming up for Detroit. The kicking unit has not come in. The Lions looking to the bench. Early in the third quarter, 31 to seven the score, the Lions on top. A high pass from center. Larry gets it. His boot is a high and a very deep one. Drives Reynolds back to the 19-yard line. Swings to the right. Cut from behind at the 20. Cut from behind by John Gordy, the rookie guard from Tennessee. He was aided by Dorn Dibble. And the ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line of Cleveland. A 45-yard punt from line of scrimmage by Yale Larry. And so the Browns, trailing 31-7, to will scrimmage at first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Tommy O'Connell played most of the game at quarterback in the first half. Although late in the second quarter, Milt Plum came in to take over, and he's in there now. The rookie from Penn State, 6'1", 205, did a great job filling in for the injured O'Connell the latter part of the regular season. Renfro flanking to the left. Both ends are tight. The snap going off to the right side. Jimmy Brown gets nothing at all as Joe Schmidt diagnosed the play and slid over to make the tackle with help from the left linebacker, Bob Long. No gain, second down, 10. Smith alternates with Robinson with instructions from the bench from Paul Brown. Second down, 10 from the 20. Plum under center. 
pitches out to the right to Carpenter. He comes up to the line of scrimmage to the 25, to the 30, swings to the 35, to the right sideline, 40, 45, and upended at the 48-yard line. Pete Brewster threw the big block for him that time to spring him loose from the line of scrimmage. Jim David finally made the tackle, but it's a long gain for Lou Carpenter from the 20 to the 47, 27 yards. The ball at the inbounds marker, far side of the field. The Browns are moving right to left. Early in the third period, about three minutes have been played. 31 to 7, Detroit's on top. Carpenter, Preston Carper splits out to the right. The left end is fairly tight. Renfro flanks outside the left end. Swinging out to the left side is Preston Carpenter. Gets away from two tackers. Is stormed under at the 49. Lou Carpenter, just shy of the 50. His forward progress marked at 49 and a half, and it's Gil Maines and Bob Long who are the key men defensively for Detroit on that play. A gain of three, second down, seven. Ray Renfro flanks out to the right. Carpenter splits a couple of yards. Pete Brewster splits left a couple. It's a double wing now. Lou Carpenter comes out to the left, and O'Connell fades, or Plum fades the pass. It is complete to Carpenter at the 35, comes to the 32-yard line, and there he's upended. Preston Carpenter, the right end, brought down by Jim David as he apparently was going to be brought down by about three different Detroit Lions, but he was able to wrestle away from them and move down to the 32-yard line. And the Browns are on the move. The Detroit Lions punted the Cleveland a moment ago. Lou Carpenter, a 27-yard run, now took the pass. At the 32-yard line of Detroit, it is first down and 10, and Renfro flanks to the right. The ends are tight. Off to the right guard position goes Lou Carpenter across the 30 to the 28-yard line. After a fake first to the fullback up the middle, Joe Schmidt brings him down to the 28, a four-yard pickup. Gain of four in the last play, second down six, and Renfro breaks huddle and flanks out to the right. As so far, the Browns are keeping their ends in tight on this series. Milk Plum under center. The snap fake to two men, rolls out to the right, looking for a receiver. He's being chased. He throws. He has Carpenter at the 18, and he's down at the 16. Preston Carpenter, the right end. Went down, went out. Milk Plum rolled out to the right, spotted him, and hit him with a strike. Joe Schmidt made the tackle. The ball at the 16-yard line. It'll be another first down for the Cleveland Browns. The Browns need this ball, and they need a touchdown. They're trailing 31-7. to Unofficial time remaining about eight minutes in the third quarter. Milk Plum the snap. Swinging out to the left is Jimmy Brown. He has one blocker in front of him. He's being chased. He gets to the 15. He gets to the 10-yard line. Swinging out to the left and out of bounds. And there, Carl Karolevitz hits him with a shoulder tackle and spins him out. Jim Ray Smith led the blocking from his left guard position. He pulled out, was in front of Jimmy Brown, and threw a real good block and enabled him to pick up six. The ball spotted now at the inbounds marker, near side of the field at the 10-yard line. And it is second down and a little better than five yards to go for a first down. The score, 31-7. to seven. This time, Milk Plum has his ends in tight. Brown and Carpenter in running position behind him. The snap. Brown off left guard. Gets only a foot if that much. Coming up from the secondary, Carl Karlevitz. Up front, Roger Zatkoff from his right linebacking position came up. They spotted that one coming, and Brown gets nothing as the ball is spotted at the 10 again. And it'll be third down and five. And again, the guard comes in. Plum under center. The snap fades directly back to pass. He's looking. He throws out to the right to Carpenter. He has it at the six. He's belted out of bounds at the five. Preston Carpenter takes the pass out in the right flat. Is hit out of bounds by Yale Larry. This will be very close to a first down, so the officials will not move the ball from the point where Carpenter went out of bounds. And we have an official timeout for a measurement, and the chains on the near side of the field have to go all the way across to the far side. And Lou Groza is standing over there to look at it. First down. First and goal at the five. Out to the left side comes Carpenter, Preston Carpenter. He cuts and he's into the end zone. It was Lou Carpenter, not Preston Carpenter. Lou wearing number 30, not Preston number 40, but he's into the end zone and the Browns had that touchdown that they needed. And they trail now by a score of 31 to 13. And there are still seven minutes remaining in the third quarter and Lou Groza will be in to attempt the extra point. He tried 32 during the regular season and he made every one of them. He converted his only other chance today. 80 yards and 10 plays for the Browns as Groza, with O'Connell holding, will try for the extra point. The ball is down. The kick is in the air. It is good. The point is good. The score now, the Detroit Lions 31, the Cleveland Browns 14. 
Lou Groza preparing to kick off for the Browns with Gedman and Larry deep to receive as the Browns have started what uh, their followers hope will be a second half comeback. Groza comes to the ball. Fairly deep into the end zone. Larry, two yards deep, comes to the five, swings to the left, back to the right, 15, 20. Spins away from two tacklers, but is down at the 22. Milt Campbell in on the kickoff unit for the Browns, along with Lou Groza, who kicked off, made the stop. The ball at the Detroit Lions' 22-yard line, and the Lions, who have been unable to generate anything in the way of an offense so far in a third period, have it first and 10 at their own 22. A little better than six minutes remaining in the third quarter, according to that unofficial scoreboard clock. And the sun continues to shine here in Detroit, and we're aided by the lights that were turned on at halftime here at Briggs Stadium. Cassidy flanks out to the left. Johnson, Gedman in the running back positions, and out to the right split at the end is Doran. Roach throws deep. He's at... Doran's there. He has it at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. He's going all the way. 78 yards. Excellent protection set up for Tobin Roach, who first faked the pitch to the left, enabled him to get all the time that was necessary for Jim Doran to get behind the secondary and complete a 78-yard pass and run play. Jim Martin tries for the conversion. The ball is down. The kick is in the air. It is good. So the Lions, striking with suddenness, have equalized the Cleveland Brown touchdown, an extra point here in the third period to go 78 yards on a pass and run from Tobin Road to Jim Doran. In deep position are Billy Reynolds and Jimmy Brown for Cleveland. The kick is high, not very deep. Brown takes it at the 11, comes to the 15, the 20, swings to the left to the 25, to the 28. Bringing him down, Jim Martin, who kicked off, along with Gary Lowe, defensive back of Detroit, who is in there on the kickoff team. First down and 10, the Browns at their own 28-yard line, between the 27 and 28 to be exact. Detroit, 38, as they have scored in every period, 17 in the first, 14 in the second, seven here in the third. The Browns, single touchdowns in the second and third quarters. Renfro flanks out to the right, Milt Plum is under center. There is movement on the part of both lines, a considerable amount of body contact, and the ball hasn't been snapped yet against Cleveland. Illegal use of hands against Detroit. Plum the snap and fades to pass. From the 20, he looks, throws over the middle. Brewster has it at the 40, fumbles. It is incomplete. He had it for just an instant, not enough to retain control, rule the officials. And so the loose ball means nothing. It's just an incomplete pass. Second down and 10 come up again. Jack Christensen was back there to cover Pete Brewster. The pass was thrown right over the middle by Milt Plum. The snap and Plum fades to pass. He's back up. He is hit. And down he goes at the 17. As that time, the Detroit Lions used the strategy of shoot the gap with the linebackers. And along with Kraus and Maines, the linebackers were really in there, and Plum never had a chance. And he loses from the 27 to the 17. A loss of 10. Third down now and 20. Whistle on the field. With the Cleveland Browns taking time out, the score is the Detroit Lions 38, the Cleveland Browns 14. Four linebackers, one or several of whom may line up on the front line. We're ready to go again with Milt Plum under center on third down and 20 from the Browns 17. Plum the snap, gives off to Jimmy Brown, and he comes up the middle to the 20. Jerry Perry, who just came into the game, met him there, along with Darius McCord, the left end. It is a gain of three. Fourth down, 17 coming up for the Browns from their own 20-yard line. And the kicking unit comes in for Cleveland with a little better than five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Back to receive for Detroit, Terry Barr, Yale Larry. The pass from center, the punt. Fair catch by Larry at the 41-yard line of Detroit. Coming down very fast under that punt for Cleveland was Bobby Freeman their first-year man from Auburn. 
a 39-yard punt from line of scrimmage. The Detroit Lions now in the air so far today unofficially have picked up better than 200 yards. First and 10, Detroit from their own. The ball is actually closer to the 42-yard line than it is the 41. Splits his right end junker by a couple of yards. The snap, fake to Johnson. Off to the left goes Gedman. Across the line of scrimmage and across the 45 to the 46. A pickup of four for Gedman, swinging wide to the left. Let's now pause 10 seconds for station identification. Walt Michaels, the Cleveland Browns fine linebacker, made that last stop after a gain of four, and it's second down, six. Cassidy flanks to the right, both ends are fairly tight. Steve Junker split about a yard at right end. The snap to Rote, the fake to the first man, and Gedman over left guard, fumbles. It is recovered by the Lions in the Cleveland territory at the 48. John Henry Johnson recovers the fumble by Gedman. It is close to a first down. Walt Michaels again was in on that tackle. The chains are stretched. First down at the 48-yard line of Cleveland. A most fortunate recovery for the Lions. Doran split about six yards at the left-end position. A five-man Cleveland line with three linebackers up tight. Rote fades as if to pass, hands off to Johnson, and he is thrown way back at the Detroit Lion 46-yard line as Walt Michaels spotted that one coming. And Don Colo, the right tackle of Cleveland, broke through as well. The loss on that last play of six yards brings up second down and 16. And Cassidy flanks out to the right, and Jim Doran splits it right end a couple. Rote fades the pass, throws quick over the middle to Johnson. He's at the 45, the 40, slips and falls at the 37. John Henry Johnson took the quick pass from Rote. Very close to another first down as Don Paul made the tackle. We will we'll again have a measurement. The gain is close to the 16 yards needed for a first down. Short by an inch or so. Cassidy flanks left. Jim Doran on the right, Junker on the left are both tight at their end positions. The snap, off to the left goes John Henry Johnson. Gets away from one man, another to the 35 to the 32 yard line. John Henry Johnson off to the left side. Tempers flare. The officials quickly push members of the Detroit Lions squad who came up to the sideline and tell them, go back to your bench. So far, they haven't responded. The ball is being brought into the inbounds marker, and a penalty is measured off against Detroit. Four-man Cleveland line as Rote fades as if the pass runs up the middle, swings out to the right. He is caught from behind, but not until he crosses the 40 to the 38-yard line. He is close to a first down. He may have it. A penalty marker was dropped. A penalty is now measured off against Cleveland, 15 yards. Illegal use of hands. It moves the ball to the Cleveland, approximately the 24-yard line. The ball itself has not been placed in position. Now it is. At the 24-yard line, it is first down and 10 for Detroit. And Walt Michaels tries to rally his teammates. He calls the defensive signal for the Browns. Steve Junker is split about five at right end. The snap and road again fades to pass. Right over the middle it is Junker at the 10-5. Touchdown! Brown linebackers who was shooting the gap was about to get to Tobin Roach. He spotted Steve Junker right over the middle. He wrestled away from Junior Wren and went all the way in. 23 yards. Tobin Roach will hold. Jim Martin will attempt the conversion. The snap. The kick. It is good. The whistle. Martin comes to the ball. His boot sails off to the left. It is picked up at the 10 to the 15 by Reynolds. 20, 25, swings to the left, swarmed under at the 29. John Gordy led the defensive charge along with Jim Martin and Dorn Dibble. Billy Reynolds brings it out from about the 10 to the 28-yard line. The Browns are first and 10 at that point, their own 28. Late third quarter. 
and an amazing score of 45 to 14 in favor of Detroit. Renfro flanks to the right and Brewster splits left. A penalty marker is dropped as Plum passes short. Intended for Lou Carpenter out on the left flat. The right end of Cleveland, Lou Carpenter, rather Preston Carpenter, is called for offside. The ends are fairly tight. A five-man line for Detroit. The snap, off to the left comes Jimmy Brown to the 30, wrestles away from one man to the 35 and spins up to the 40. He picks up enough yardage for a first down at the Brown 40-yard line where Terry Barr of the Lions secondary brings him down. And referee Gibbs now indicates first down Cleveland at the 40. But a minute remaining according to that clock on the scoreboard in this third quarter. Official attendance paid 55,263. Renfro again breaks huddle and flanks to the right and both ends are fairly tight. Although Preston Carper is split a couple of yards at right end. Plum fades to pass. He's back at his 30. He looks. He never gets the pass away. It has fallen on the 32-yard line. It is ruled not a pass, but a fumble. Jerry Perry. A long... Jerry Perry, along with... Uh, I spotted one other number, but now I've lost it. Broke through. It is ruled that Plum's arm was not going forward in the act of passing. Gene Cronin was another Detroit Lion who was in there. And the Lions have converted another play into a break for themselves. And they have possession now at the 32-yard line of Cleveland, with perhaps time enough remaining for one play in this quarter. The gun, that's the end of the third quarter, and the score. The Detroit Lions, 45. The Cleveland Browns, 14. Dave Middleton is out to the right. The Lion line is tight. The handoff goes, fakes to Hart. Rote going back to throw. He throws a long one, and it is another touchdown. A 32-yard scoring play. Dave Middleton, who has flanked out to the right, went straight down the far sideline and took it in the end zone after he had outrun the Cleveland defense. So the Lions now have a score of 51 to 14. And Jim Martin boots it through the upright. And the score is 52 to 14. And the Lion fans, some 56,000 strong here at Briggs Stadium, still chanting go, go, go as they want the Lions to pile up just as many points as they can here this afternoon. In the first minute of play of the fourth period, Martin gets the whistle, moves up on the ball. It's a high kick. It's short this time. Reynolds takes it at the 8-yard line. Straight ahead of the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25. And there he is hit on a jarring tackle by Darn Dibble or, or Stan Campbell, number 67 and not number 87. The kickoff went to the Browns' 8-yard line. Billy Reynolds came up the middle and cut to his right, but he was hit by Stan Campbell at the 27-yard line. So there the Browns have it, first and ten on their own 27. Milt Plum, Lou Carpenter, Ray Renfro, Jimmy Brown in the backfield. Plum at quarterback has Renfro flanked out to the right. The handoff goes to the fullback. It's Jimmy Brown with it across the 30, up to about the 35 to 37, hit by Terry Barr. Jimmy Brown, the rookie fullback, who is rookie of the year in the National Football League, got the handoff from Milt Plum, went wide to his left. And he got over the 35-yard line to the 36. A gain of nine yards on the play. Second down and one yard to go. Renfro to the right. The handoff goes to Jimmy Brown, the fullback. He goes straight ahead, up over the 40-yard line to about the 42 before he is piled up. It's enough for the first down, of course, since the Browns needed but one yard for the first down. The Browns up to the line of scrimmage. Hard Hunter is over the ball at center. Plum of the ball. He gives to Lou Carpenter away from one man. He's at the 40 to 45. Cuts back in. Loses his footing as he does so. And the referee rules that he is downed at the 47-yard line. That was Lou Carpenter, the ball carrier. It was Carl Karalevich who covered Carpenter at the 47 as Lou lost his footing in trying to cut to his left. And then when the Browns come up to the line of scrimmage, he also signals the defensive backfield and uh, sometimes they then move into a new position. Renfro out to the left, the handoff to Lou Carpenter, up the middle, close to the 50-yard line. Piled up there by three or four of the Detroit Lions, led by Bob Miller, number 74. The ball on the 50-yard line. 
12 minutes left to play in this championship football game. The Lions 52 and the Browns 14. Plum with the ball. He flips to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He gets around to the right. Comes across to about the 49-yard line in Detroit territory. It's close to a first down, but it looks from our broadcasting vantage point that it is going to be short by about a foot. It was Joe Schmidt, the linebacker, who came in to make the tackle on Jimmy Brown. Brown getting the ball from quarterback Mill Plum, swinging wide to the right. Got just about a yard to the Lion 49-yard line, and it's fourth down. The Detroit defense dug in there tightly. Plum calls the signals. He fakes to one man. He's going back to pass. He gets away from a Lion defender. Now he runs with the ball. He's at the 50, the 45, to the 40 in Detroit territory. And he has wrestled to the ground at the 42. But it'll be a first down. Mill Plum faked a running play, sent Jimmy Brown into the center of the line. Then he went back to set up the pass. There was a rush against him. He ducked under a tackler and finally was stopped by Gene Cronin at the 41-yard line in Detroit territory. Mill Plum, the rookie quarterback, showing a slight limp. He had a muscle cramp earlier in the week during a practice session. The Lions are up there right now in a seven-man line. The handoff to Carpenter. He finds an opening. He's down to the 30, and there he is hit and hit hard. Carl Karalevich and Gary Lowe's now in there defensively for Detroit making the stop on the play. But Carpenter gets from the 41 down to about the 31. It's going to be close to a first down, but it's second and about a foot. Second and about a foot for the Browns on the Detroit 31. Plum of the ball. He flips to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He's around the right side. He's at the 30, down to about the 28. And he is hit by Jack Christensen. Christensen just uh, upended him at the 28-yard line. But it'll be enough for the first down as Brown advanced the ball from the 31 to the Detroit 28. First and 10 for the Browns on the line 28. In the fourth period at Briggs Stadium, 10 minutes left to play in the football game. And it's the Lions 52. The Cleveland Browns 14 as the Lions have taken advantage of every break which has come their way this afternoon. Plum calls the signals, fakes to Brown, he gives to Lou Carpenter. Wide to the left, he's at the 30, he's down to the 25, and he is dropped at the 25 by three tacklers. Yale Larry was the first man to get him. There's a penalty marker on the play back here at the line of scrimmage. So let us see what the call is going to be. Terry Barr also in on the tackle. Carpenter had moved the ball to about the 25-yard line for a gain of three yards. There's a holding penalty, however, against the Detroit Lions. The ball at the inbounds markers from the far sideline. The Browns moving from our left to our right here in the fourth period. Renfro flanks out to the right. Pete Brewster at the left end is split. Milt Plum, the quarterback, calls the signals. He takes, he gives to Jimmy Brown, the fullback, and Brown is stopped standing up as he gets inside the 25 to about the 23. Gene Cronin was in there to make the tackle. Jimmy Brown gets a couple of yards. Mark it at the 24, a gain of just a yard. A gain of a yard for Brown. Second down and nine yards to go. Cleveland out of the huddle once again. Art Hunter, the former Notre Dame All-American, over the ball at center. Renfro, the flanker, but just by a couple of yards outside the right end this time. Plum back to pass. He throws. Preston Carpenter has it at the 15, and down he goes at the 13. But again, there is a marker on this play. Jack Christensen made the tackle for the Detroit Lions as the right end. Preston Carpenter hit for the near sideline. The pass was good to the 13, but this time there's going to be a penalty against the Cleveland Browns. And it's a long one. Jimmy Brown is the fullback. Renfro flanks out to the right. He's being covered over there by Jack Christensen. Plum takes the ball from center. He goes back to pass. His protection breaks down. He starts to run with it. He lateral drop out of Jimmy Brown, the fullback. He's all the way back at the 50-yard line. He gets the block. Now he starts to his right, and he is dropped at the 50-yard line. Bob Miller made the tackle. Mill Plum went back to pass. His protection broke down. He bumped into one of his own men as he started to run with the ball, and he turned and tried a lateral to Jimmy Brown. Brown couldn't get his hands on it, finally picked it up at about the Detroit 48, started to, to look around for blockers, but was dropped for a loss all the way to the 50-yard line. So it is now third down. And 40 yards to go. The series started at the 20-yard line. Eight minutes left to play in the football game. Double wing. 
Carpenter out to the left. Renfro to the right. Both ends split by about five yards. A three-man line for Detroit. Plum on the quarterback draws at the 40. He's out of the 35, down to the 31-yard line, and he is tackled. Bob Long, number 86. The Lions linebacker on the left side was the man who made the tackle. The Lions, when it is obvious that it's a passing situation, use only a three-man line and send their linebackers in the total defensive backfield back there to cover against the receivers. It's now fourth down. One-yard line. The Browns move out of the huddle, and again it's the double wing. Lou Carpenter to the left, Ray Renfro to the right. The Lions now are in a six-man line, and the rush is on, Mel Plum. He throws one right over the middle to Preston, uh, to Lou Carpenter, Preston Carpenter, rather, number 40. He gets inside the 25 to the 23, and there he's dropped, and the Lions take over. The Detroit team had the rush on that time. Plum did get the pass away over the middle. The game is being brought to you by High Grade, spelled H-Y-G-R-A-D-E, and it's Kingan, Carstens, and Deerfoot Farms divisions. The ball moved to the 23-yard line, but it was not enough for the first down, and so Detroit takes over. Seven minutes remaining in the game, and the Lions are in front by a score of 52-14. to 14. Detroit to the line of scrimmage. Cassidy in the ball game. He's flanked out to the right. The handoff goes to the fullback, Leon Hart. And Hart is nailed as he gets just about a yard to the 24-yard line. It's Gene Gedman, not Leon Hart, the ball carrier. And now Jerry Rykow comes into the ballgame. Tobin Rook goes out. Listen to the hand he gets. Tobin Road. Cassidy is out to the right. The handoff goes to Gadman. Wide to the left. He's at the 25 to the 28, the 30-yard line. Vince Costello wrestles him to the ground there along with a couple of other Browns. Junior N, the safety man, and Don Paul, the right halfback. There's another flag on the play, however, and it is going to be a penalty against the Cleveland Browns. Gadman had moved the ball to the 30-yard line, but the Browns are now penalized to the Detroit 44. Illegal use of hands against the Browns. And the Lions have it first down, 10 yards to go on their own 44 with Jerry Rakow in there at quarterback. And the Lions have all but wrapped up the World Championship for Pro Football. The Lions to the line of scrimmage. Rakow at quarterback calls the signals. Cassidy is out to the right once again. Rakow hands off this time to Gedman, and he cuts into the left side of his line, then moves forward over the 40 to about the 43-yard line. There's a flag on the play on this play. Bob Gain, the defensive tackle on the left side for Cleveland, made the tackle along with Walter Michaels. But there's another penalty against the Browns. The ball was carried by Gedman to the 43. The Browns are penalized. Cassidy out to the left. Rykow calls the signals. There's another flag. Rykow carries the ball behind the left side of his line, gets to the 46-yard line. A gain of a couple of yards on the play, but there's a flag on the playing field, so let's see what this penalty is going to be. Again, it was Bob Gain, the left tackle for the Browns, who made the stop. The officials, now up there talking to the Browns captain, Don Colo. And the penalty is against the Detroit Lions. Of course, on that penalty, the down remains the first down. Charlie Oni is in the ball game for Detroit. Rykow calls the signals. He gives to Gedman. He goes wide to his right. There are flags on this play. Gedman gets away from one man over near the far sideline and finally is pushed out of bounds by two or three of the Browns. Bobby Freeman, Warren Lahr over there. Also Walter Michaels. The Detroit team offside. But it was declined by the Browns, so it is second down. And about 11 and a half yards to go. The ball at the 37 and a half in Detroit territory. Detroit out of the huddle once again. Gatsky over the ball. Darn Dibble is out to the right. The inside flanker. Rykow going back to pass now. He gets protection now. He throws. It is no good. Intended for Gene Gedman across the 50-yard line in Brown's territory. He was covered by Junior Wren, but the pass was off the target. Gene Gedman, the intended receiver, along the near sideline, uh, just as he moved into Cleveland territory inside the 50-yard line. So now it'll be third down. Cassidy is the running back. Rykow calls the signals. The flanker is out to the right. 
Rykow looks like he starts to run with the ball, but he is dropped at just about the line of scrimmage, the 37-yard line. Again, it's Bob Gain, the tackle driving in, along with Bill Quinlan. Rykow apparently trying to go on a quarterback draw, but it did not work as he was stopped at just about the line of scrimmage. So now it is fourth down for the Lions. And with a lead of 52 to 14, they send Yale Larry into the football game. As he gets the kick away, it's a good one. Hanulak signals for a fair catch and takes it at the Browns 31. So Larry punts to the Cleveland 31-yard line. The rush was on by the Browns. Mel Campbell was leading that rush in on Yale Larry. But Larry managed to get the punt away, a 31-yard kick as Handulak took it on the fair catch. Out to the left is Lou Carpenter. Milt Plummett, quarterback, calls the signals. He goes back to pass. He throws. It is no good. Almost intercepted by Gary Lowe. It was Jack Christensen who hit Ray Renfro just about the time he was reaching for the ball. The ball bounded high in the air, and Gary Lowe made a diving try for it, but he could not grab it. So it goes as an incompleted forward pass. Plum intended for Renfro. The handoff this time goes to Jimmy Brown, the fullback, wide to his left. He gets to the 35, still on his feet, across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Terry Barr there to make the tackle for the Detroit Lions. So Brown picked up five yards. It'll be third down and five yards to go for Cleveland. The ball on the Browns' 36-yard line. Jerry Perry was in on the tackle for the Detroit Lions. Plum takes. He fakes to Lou Carpenter. He goes back to pass. He throws. It is no good. Intended for Brewster. The left end as Pete broke over the middle at the 50-yard line, but the pass was off the target. So now it is going to be fourth down, and still a little better than five yards to go. Jack Christensen was defending on Pete Brewster on the play, but it was not necessary for him to break it up since the pass didn't come too close to Brewster. There's the snap from Tommy Catlin at center. It's off the side of the foot of Kunz, and it is coming over near the near sideline and going out of bounds on the Detroit 44. Kenny Kahn's kicking to the Lion 44-yard line. It went out of bounds. A 20-yard kick. And Detroit takes over. Middleton is the flanking back. Doran is at right end. Rykow barks the signals. He takes. He hands off to Cassidy. He's at the 50, the 45, the 40. And he is dropped at the 35-yard line. Wrestled down there by four or five of the Browns was Don Paul, who made the initial stop. Rykow started to run to his right, spun around and handed the ball to Cassidy, and he found a big hole in the middle of the Browns' line, and Hopalong knew what to do with it, and he went all the way to the Browns' 35-yard line. 21-yard run for Cassidy. On the 35, it's first and 10 for Detroit. Rykow again calls the signals. The flanker this time is out to the right. Right cow with the ball, rolls to his right, throws a pass downfield. It is no good. Just over the outstretched hands of Dave Middleton at the 10-yard line. Defending on the play was Bobby Freeman. Freeman and Middleton were teammates at Auburn University during their collegiate days. Jerry Rykow's forward pass. There's a penalty against the Cleveland Browns. Doran out to the left. Rykow calls the signals. He takes. Again, he hands to Cassidy on that same play. And Cassidy gets to about the 17-yard line. The only difference was at this time, Rykow was moving to his left as he handed in back of him to Cassidy. Cassidy got into about the 17-yard line. Vince Costello, Don Colo, and Waller Michaels all making the tackle. A gain of three yards for Cassidy, and it's second down and seven for the Lions. Rykow rolls to his right. He throws. There's a man there. Cassidy has it for touchdown. talking about sweet revenge and the Lions have now topped the 56 points scored against them by the Browns in 1954 because the score of this football game is 58 to 14 and Jim Martin will have the opportunity to make it 59. The ball will be held by Tobin Road at the 10 yard line. Time called here momentarily. The fans have thrown some debris into the end zone. It's spotted. It's booted. It's good. 
good, and the score is now 59 to 14. The Detroit Lions 59, the Browns 14. Campbell, the former Olympic decathlon champion. Martin Booms won. It's a high one. Jimmy Brown takes it at the six-yard line. He's to the 10, the 15, the 20. Moves to his left and is tackled at the 23, the 24-yard line. The kick went to the Browns five-yard line, and Jimmy Brown returned it from that spot to the 23-yard line, where it's the Browns' first down, 10 yards to go, with a little better than two minutes remaining to be played in this football game. The officials actually right now are signaling the benches that we have the two minutes. A Detroit fan racing across the field with outstretched arms to greet his heroes on the far side. Bobby Lane on crutches over there, of course, tries to get out of his way. Renfro is out to the right. The left end, Brewster is split. Bum hands to Jimmy Brown, the fullback. He gets away from Roger Zetkoff, fumbles it, however, and it drops on it at the 17-yard line. Jimmy Brown taking from Mill Plum, the quarterback, trying to get around the left end. He was hit by Zatkoff. He bounced off Zatkoff, but the ball bounced off him. Jerry Perry tried to get the ball, but Jimmy Brown fell on it. At the 16-yard line in Cleveland Territory, a minute and a half showing on the scoreboard clock. Plum takes, rolls to his right. He has protection. He throws to Lou Carpenter, who has bounced out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Jim Martin, who has seen little action defensively for the Lions this afternoon, was the man who bounced Carpenter out of bounds. Now fans are pouring down on the field from all angles. It's third down and about eight yards to go for Cleveland. As the ball is at the 24-yard line. The right end, Preston Carpenter, is split. Plum takes. He gives to Lou Carpenter. Carpenter wide to his left. Gets the block. He's at the 30, the 35. Cuts to his right and is dropped at the 39-yard line. It's Gary Lowe of the Detroit secondary who made the tackle on the play. It's the first down, of course. Carpenter swinging wide to his left behind good blocking. Got to the 39-yard line in Cleveland Territory. And now we have just about 45 seconds left to play in the football game. A dejected Waller Michaels, the only member of the Browns sitting on the bench on the far side of the field. Ray Renfro out to the right. The handoff goes to Luke Carpenter. He swings wide, gets to the 40-yard line, and there he is hit by three or four of the Lions. Gene Cronin led the charge in, in there for Detroit. 20 seconds left to play in the football game. Gil Maines also in on the stop. The ball is spotted at the 40-yard line. Second and about seven, and time is running out, and the Detroit Lions are champions of the National Football League as they have handled the Browns in decisive fashion here this afternoon. And there's the end of the game. The final score, the Detroit Lions 58, the Cleveland Browns 14. We'll be back in a moment for the final wrap-up of today's game. So, ladies and gentlemen, the 1957 professional championship game is now history. A crowd of over 55,000 here at Briggs Stadium, Detroit, I believe at many points in today's game, could not quite believe what they were seeing. A Detroit Lion team that has won the professional championship by a score of 59 to 14. The last pro championship here in Detroit came in 1953 against these same Cleveland Browns when the game was won by a score of 17 to 16. Then came 54, the last time these two teams met in pro championship play, and the Browns won it by a score of 56 to 10. To pick out the usual highlights in a game like this would be completely impossible. Time would not permit. The score tells the story. As we gaze across the field here from our vantage point on the west side of Briggs Stadium, we look at that scoreboard, which tells 17 points in the first period for Detroit and then 14 points in each of the second, third, and fourth periods. 